I am announcing today that I will nominate tomorrow to be the leader of the Labor Party in New South Wales. But before I plunge into that, I just want to say on behalf of all members of the Labor Party to Jody McKay, thank you so much, Jody, for all you have done for us, not just in the two years that you were leader, but in the sterling career that you have had over more than a decade. And I was very sad to see Jody resign on Friday. It should not have come to that. I was very sad to hear her say that she thought the only way to unify our party was to sacrifice her own leadership and that she felt that she had to do that because she was constantly battling a small group of people and that she'd had enough. Jodie McKay should still be our leader. Jodie McKay was elected by 63 per cent of the Labor Party branch members. You might be inclined to call them ordinary people as well, except they're not ordinary in one respect. They actually own the party. They owned the party, not the apparatchiks. The members own the party. And some of the members have been on to me saying that following what happened to Jody, they feel like ripping their membership tickets up. And I want to say to all members of the Labor Party in New South Wales, please don't do that. Please stay in the party. Please help me heal our party and win government in 2023. There are people in the media today suggesting that we don't have time and we shouldn't have a membership ballot. A membership ballot has never been more important for the members of the Labor Party because healing has never been more important for us. I've been heartened by conversations I've had with colleagues. One uh, rang me today. I spoke to her on Friday. She said she'd take the weekend to think about um, who she might support, assuming that there is another, uh, another candidate. I expect that uh, Chris will nominate tomorrow. And she said, I'm inclining to you, Michael. I'll keep thinking about it. I'll watch through the campaign. But I and others have been talking. We think you are our best chance at healing the party. And that's what I intend to do. I intend to heal the party if I'm the leader. And I intend to look after, as I've always done, the ordinary people in New South Wales who've been forgotten. People who have given up on being able to afford a home, not only just in Sydney, but on the Central Coast, in the Hunter, and down through the Illawarra. People who are struggling to pay the rent. People like the real heroes of our pandemic, the contact tracers, the people who scrub and keep our hospitals clean and safe, the paramedics who pick up and rescue people and take them to emergency departments just like that one, only to find out that it's chock-a-block and they have to sit there with them for hours and sometimes longer because they're full. People in the health department who've been advising the governments on how to keep us safe in this pandemic, our teachers, our police, all of the vital workers. And I have to remind you that it was this government, this coalition government, that took people like that, our heroes, to court to stop them, to prevent them getting a measly 2.5% pay rise. And the result of that disastrous policy since the Liberals introduced it early in their term has been that wages all across New South Wales have been suppressed. You can do with less money. Forget about the fact that all your costs keep going up. Suck it up and take a pay rise. Well, we don't want to suck it up and, and sorry, suck it up and take a pay cut. That's the end of that. I'm here to stick up for all of those ordinary people in New South Wales. And I'm not just standing here today to ask to be Labor leader. I'm standing here today to say to the ordinary people of New South Wales that have been forgotten by this bad, tired, old, corrupt and rotten government, I want to be your Premier in 2023 because I think about you every single day.